game went on? What do you think were some of the defensive keys? Um, we just had to, you know, stay consistent, you know, stick to the script that we had, you know, just doing our one elevens like Coach Ward always tells us, reminds us, you know, at the end of the day, bro, this stuff happens when everybody's doing their job at the same time. And I feel like we fed that from that a little bit. But that's just because it's a lot. It's not a loss, but it's a lesson. Just, just showing the importance of that and just being, like, you know, consistently good and not occasionally great. You know, there's great moments in there, but we got to be consistent in everything that we do. So, Trey, what did you see with the – their offense starting to get the the run game going a little bit in the second half. Uh, I mean, with some of the things that uh, they brought <clears throat> in the second half, there were some misfits. Uh, I missed a fit, one of the fits that uh, led to a big run. But um, other than that, once we started to dial in uh, the runs that they were doing and bringing, uh, as you see in the end, we started to, started to stop it. So. How would you guys evaluate the overall defensive performance? We obviously got to be better. You see the points on the board we lost. So uh, there's always something to improve from uh, as far as defense. But uh, we played hard. We played with effort. We played with a, played with a, a good respect. So uh, we just got to make sure we're doing our 111. Uh, BJ. Uh, Kenny was running out the field with you guys. It sounded like he was yelling to keep your heads up. What was the, the message he had for you guys in the locker room after? You know, we just, like I said before, it's not a loss. It's a lesson, you know. And this is something that you have to build upon. Like, you know, he's always been preaching, like, how are we going to respond to adversity? And that's the challenge that we have for this week. And that we're going to, you know, we're going to accept that challenge and, you know, face it head first, you know what I'm saying? Like, there was never a point in that game where we didn't feel like we were going to win. That's what we should expect to do every week. You know, that's something that we just got, you know, hone in on the little things. Little things matter. Jaden, uh, how would you just evaluate your play tonight and some of the big plays you were able to connect on? Um, I thought I could have did a way better job. Um, offense could have had the defenses back more, but that's why we're here. You know, we learn. You know, learn from it. And um, yeah, I did. There's a lot of things I could have done better tonight. Uh, for the defensive guys, uh, obviously some of the failed fourth downs meant you guys had your backs against the wall a couple times. What about kind of the defense and? The position you guys were put in there, kind of having to make a stop at crucial times. I wouldn't want to have my back on against the wall with nobody else. You know what I'm saying? Like we built that bond with each other. Like when stuff like that happens, you know, I trust everybody right next to me. I trust the guys behind me to do what we got to do. So you know, I, I didn't feel no type of way about it. We were poised in the face of adversity. Like I said before, like you know, Coach Dillingham always challenges us to like how are we gonna respond to adversity, and that's the thing. That was just a challenge that we accepted at that time. And then, guys, defensively, too, I mean, pass rush-wise, how do you feel the growth was from, I mean, that last game against Southern Utah to this game? Because you guys seemed to get in the backfield quite a bit. They were dominating up front, and it helped us in the back end because they were trying to get the ball out a lot faster. So uh, big props to our D-line for really stepping up this game and uh, getting in the backfield. It, help, it helps a lot. So uh, they really, really improved from the first game to the second game. Jake Seymour, uh, Sundable Source. Jaden, you had a uh, pocket presence today where you st stayed in the pocket, maybe stepped up and made some plays. How do you feel like that can maybe attribute to making some more of those deep, uh, deep plays on the field? Um, yeah, just keeping my eyes downfield and um, just extending plays. It always makes the job harder on the defense, but um, yeah. Jaden, what did you learn about yourself in your second performance with Arizona State? Uh, I just learned I, I got to deal with some things better, stay positive, and um, just gather your teammates around and, you know, you learn more from losses than you do wins. So um, not complaining, but we'll learn from this and we'll come back better next week. Kenny, Chris Carmen, son of a source. Um, can you talk about some of the big plays that didn't go your way in the second half, the fourth downs, uh, the drop that Guillory had, the, the holding on the Roach plan? Yeah, unfortunate. Uh, obviously, those were critical plays in the game. But at the end of the day, we got to be more consistent in the second half. You know, we didn't put together a drive. Uh, and you're not going to win many football games when you're not converting third and ones and fourth and ones. 
And I think that's the simplest way to, to look at the second half is we were getting into manageable down and distances and then we weren't getting the job done. And we got to do a better job as a staff putting our players in the best position to be successful. And you lost um, Emmett Boley. Uh, you already had Isaiah Glass not, not playing. Cade Briggs didn't play. So three offensive linemen, how much but of that was a factor and, and any update on those guys? Yeah, uh, we, we don't know right now on those guys if they'll be back for next week, but... Uh, one statistically you're going to convert over a 75 percent chance uh and if you convert it's like a turnover uh the issue is we didn't convert those and when you don't convert those it is a turnover but uh you're you're playing the odds that you're going to convert the majority of those and we had a, we felt like we had a good plan going into it in those scenarios and we just didn't convert and that's the story of the game if you convert fourth and ones i think the the game is different we don't convert fourth and ones and the game is how it is so we got to do better at that. We got to do a better job as a staff, starting with myself, putting our guys in a better position to be successful. How would you evaluate Jaden tonight? I thought, uh, once again, the first half, he came out and played really well. Uh, I think in the second half, they took away the deep ball. They backed everybody up and they challenged us to run the ball. And we still couldn't get into a rhythm running the ball. And when you can't run the ball uh, versus that defense, just be consistently enough. Uh, it's a challenge because they play with an extra safety. So when he's not in the run fit and he's playing the vertical passing game, uh, you're plus one in the run game. So throwing the ball other than screens, you're going to be throwing into bad numbers. And uh, we just couldn't establish that run game. And we got to do a better job as a staff creating angles. And it starts with me. Hi, Coach. Carly Koskovich, Inferno Intel. So you've talked about Jaden's mental strength and maturity. How do you think like he showed that tonight, especially towards the end of the game? Yeah, I mean, he showed it tonight. I mean, we're down nine points at the end of the football game. And, uh, you know, he throws a great pass down the sideline um, and responded there. So, I mean, he, he went back in the game as a young buck. He didn't cower. He didn't put his head down, and he responded. And that's what this program is about. That's what it's going to be about. Uh, we're going to continue to push the guys to respond. Uh, you know, that locker room is upset. But like I told the locker room, everybody is rejoicing in, your, in the failure. I said, that the rest of the world is fired up. I said, we need to respond. We need to come back tomorrow, come back Monday, and get better, learn from your mistakes, and grow. And that's all you can do. And Coach, I know earlier in the week you said you didn't know if you'd see the three quarterbacks, but just the success your defensive line, the front had, getting into the backfield early. Do you feel that, I mean, that was obviously the corporate of seeing all three quarterbacks? And how do you feel the defense just grew from last game to this game? Yeah, our defensive line uh, did a really nice job getting in the backfield. Uh, first half, we did a phenomenal job stopping the run. Second half, they ran, they leaned on us a little bit, uh, which is unfortunate. And part of that is we couldn't keep our defense off the field. You know, they were playing so many snaps. And, uh, you know, our depth isn't quite where we would like it to be. And uh, they started leaning on us, and it showed. So we got to do a better job on offense, uh, keeping the defense off the field, and then defensively uh, getting off the field in the second half. Hey, Coach Jordan Ham, Sports 360 AZ. How would you assess how the offensive line played, especially after Emmett's injury? Yeah, I thought uh, I thought it was some plays good, some plays bad. I thought our pass protection early in the game, going into the fourth quarter, one of the last two drives were pretty solid. Once again. Uh, just got to get some more vertical movement and some more movement in the run game. Uh, and then we got to be better. We got to make some people miss too, you know, so I think it's a, it's accumulation of multiple things. It's not the O-line. It's, it's the, it's myself putting together the best scheme. It's our tight ends blocking, our wide receivers blocking, our O-line blocking, our running backs hitting the hole and our quarterback controlling the player he has to control. I think there's a multitude of things that go into uh, the run game. It's not just those five. It's uh, all 11 and the coaching staff. 
And uh, like I said earlier, it starts with me. I got to do a better job putting those guys in position to be successful. Go Joseph Griff. Igo. Oh, sorry. Go Joseph Igo, State Press. Kenny, you guys ran a lot of Wildcat tonight. Was that something you guys saw with Oklahoma State? And what did you think of the execution tonight? Yeah, uh, I thought it started off. It worked really well early. Uh, they, they, we were in 14 personnel, and uh, they showed to match 14 personnel, and they did that early. So we took advantage of some things. They kept their 3-3-5 on the field versus 14 personnel, and fourth and ones were stopping the run. And uh, that's something that we can't have happen. You know, we can't be out, Matt. We can't be in 14 and a team being a 3-3-5 structure and uh, not be able to run the ball on fourth and one. So uh, I think we have to be cr more creative offensively as a staff that if, if we're not winning that, that uh, I got to find an alternative route to be successful in those situations. Coach Greg Moore, Arizona Republic. Tough loss, right? But in the first half, you gave them everything they could handle. You matched wits with Mike Gundy, who's been doing this 19 years, 17 straight bowl games. He's in his 19th season. What does it feel like to have gone against a coach of his caliber and to have seen that you belong? Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, we talked before the game, and he expressed, you know, he's at his alma mater, just like me, and he was, except he took over a program that was in a really good position. And he talked about how his first year he had a losing record, and then he won seven games, two of his lower winning seasons in his career for two seasons. And then it clicked in year four with his culture. And I think that was kind of his message to me was don't waver, that it doesn't matter. You know, don't worry about the results right now. Worry about the process. And if you stay true to the process, the results will happen. And I really appreciated that message from a guy who's done it a long time, who's been really successful, who's seen a lot of people succeed and a lot of people fail. And uh, then he also said, make sure I go to, ironically, you asked that question. It's kind of funny. He said, make sure you go to your kids' events that uh, that's what this is about, and that's the balance you need if you want to do this for a long time. Coach, uh, Sammy Newt, uh, Devil's Digest. You guys have scored three points over the second half of the first two games. What is the kind of the key that you see to making those second half adjustments a little bit easier? Yeah, we got to, I mean, there was really, other than them backing up their monster safety, take away the shot, there wasn't a change in a schematic plan. Uh, they run what they run. They do what they do. He declares what he's going to be early in terms of what his coverage is going to be, and they stay true to that. So I think we've just got to be able to, to run the ball better in the second half, and uh, that's that's pretty much it. You know, we're, we're not establishing drives, and we got to get in rhythm and establish some drives. And then what could you say about B.J. Green's performance tonight? Was a monster up front. Yeah, he's, he's been a phenomenal player for us all fall camp, all spring. Um, he's a great worker. He's got great energy. Uh, I'm glad I have him on our team, and I'm glad I get to coach him. Uh, Hudson French in the Zone Network. You talked about the 3-3-5 and their monster safety. I wanted to do better, but what was the initial game plan going into face a three safety look like that? It's kind of unique. Yeah, we, wanted, we knew how we could control them and get them in and out of run fits. So we were pulling them out of run fits with some things. Uh, we knew they were going to play trap defense, so we did some things schematically to negate trap coverage to get our hats back because the whole defensive structure is built to get the ball to the perimeter, right? All the five techniques, spill the ball to the edges, spill the ball to the monster who's scraping to the corner, the who trap, and then the safeties who add on if you block their corners. So we were trying to get on the deepest players, and uh, we knew we had a plan to do that. And uh, to be honest, that plan was there. Uh, but uh, it's, it's our job to adjust if things aren't working, uh, even if we think it's the best thing. We have to be more creative to find a way to be successful throughout the entire football game. Um, and I take responsibility for that. Uh, our players are playing their butts off. Our players are playing hard. Uh, for the most part, we play disciplined football. Uh, I got to do a better job uh, putting them in positions to be successful. Hey, Coach, uh, on the fourth down play there late in the game, uh, just what went into the decision to throw the ball there and to be in the shotgun in that instance? In uh, the, last, the last drive? Uh, the one that you guys went for it like, with like six minutes left. Okay, the six minute left one? Yes. That was just the uh, the call we had. I didn't know if you were talking about the fourth and ten we threw the fade in the, with 240 left, sorry. Uh, but we just had a call. You know, they're, they showed uh, on their old tape that they were a big two Tampa, three double cloud team in third and mediums. 
Uh, they played a little bit more four match because they have better corners here. So that was probably the only thing schematically that was different than uh, what was shown on tape from his prior school and his prior week was he pressed his corners more, played more of the four match coverage on those down and distances. Uh, they got us one on an interception with the safety driving the dig on a third medium, which didn't show up on tape a lot. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I mean, it was just part of the plan. So and we just we had an opportunity and just didn't take advantage of it. Hey, Coach, Caleb Campetto, Devil's Digest. You talk about, you know, Oklahoma State taking away that deep ball threat and kind of the lack of run game, but we did see a lot of screens in the second half. Is that just part of the kind of your adjustment to try to spread the field to set up that run game a little bit better? Yeah, that was just the compliment. Uh, you know, when you're getting trapped defense and you're getting everybody deep in the middle of the field, uh, there's a cavity in there. Uh, to throw intermediate screens. So we tried to hit a few intermediate screens. We hit them in the first half. We hit them in the second half. Uh, we were close to really hitting a few that got out. None of them really got out, but we were close to hitting a few that got out. But that was really what they were giving us was run game and intermediate passing game and screens and uh, took away the shot game. S smart by them. Force us, force us to run the football. Doug Franz, Doug Franz Unplugged.com. Coach, um, I'm over here. The uh, opposing defense offsides on a PAT. Standard Dillingham protocol, you're always going to take a point off the board and go for it, or just a, something you know about Oklahoma State? No, we had a really good going into the game plan. They always sub big people when we went big people. So we loved our game plan on fourth and one, ironically. Uh, and it showed up in the first drive with Scat, lined up in Wildcat multiple times, scored. Right, so we knew if we got to fourth and if we could get a one and a half uh, in today's game of kickoffs, a five yard in addition to kicking off doesn't really give you an advantage because you kick the ball out the end zone anyways. So there's no advantage, but gaining a point going from the one and a half, right, you should take advantage of that, especially when you feel like you have a good plan. And obviously it worked there, but uh, later in the game, like I said, they stayed in little people and we just didn't, didn't, didn't move them enough. Kenny, uh, Scat and Brooks can break tackles in their assignments down. Brown had the fumble on his, his one carry, didn't get back in. Kevin White didn't play until the end of the game. The athleticism at, at running back, how much of a, of a factor do you think that is in a game like this? Yeah, I think it's huge. I mean, I think we need to get Tevin a little more involved just with his ability to break one. Uh, right now, we're not breaking any. Uh, but I think both those backs that you know played well tonight I think there was a few that we'd like to have back uh, where we just got tripped up, but I think both those guys played well. But uh, the thing that the thing that we really need to focus on as a team is, you know, responding still. You know, too many times we're still complaining, right? And it starts with me. Uh, I got to stop complaining to the referees, even though I disagree. You know, even though there's some things that I want to talk to them about, right? I got to do it in a manner that uh, reflects how I want my team to act. So once again, that starts with this with myself. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.